Hey everyone, this week let's compare and contrast two very different protests. Firstly, in Afghanistan there was a women's rights protest. They were demanding the right to have an education and a job, and the government responded with tear gas and weaponry, but I guess that's not terribly surprising the White House did after all leave behind a bountiful collection of equipment for the new government to brutalise its people with. There was a video this last week of the Taliban flying around in a captured US helicopter. I'm not sure if the Air Force still paints glamour models on the side of its warplanes, but if they do then they're going to have to probably get a paintbrush to edit them. They're a little bit risque for Sharia law. It wouldn't surprise me therefore if one day we saw a lady in a kneecap painted onto the side of a captured F-16. All things considered, the situation is deeply unpleasant, especially for the Russian and Chinese arms dealers who have undoubtedly missed out on a lot of sales opportunities there. What then is the reaction to all this in Islington? Workers and feminists of the world unite, perhaps a march down Whitehall or a demand that the UN or the EU step in as if the EU would do anything. Well, there was actually a protest in London this last week, but it was over that most British of topics, the weather. Extinction Rebellion are on the move again and they're blocking the entrance to the Science Museum over the decision to let the oil company Shell sponsor an exhibit. There is, of course, a sense of irony in it. These are the same people who normally spend their time pleading with the public to listen to the science and trust the science, and yet they're not actively preventing access to the science. This is the same sort of deeply annoying yet not terribly effective protesting that the Fathers of Justice types did a couple of years back. I'm waiting for one of them to dress up as Isaac Newton and scale the side of the Science Museum with a banner about how the public doesn't understand the gravity of the situation. Get it, Isaac Newton? Anyway, instead we're left with a bunch of left-wing student activists and board housewives throwing paint at buildings, blocking roads and using spurious environmental reasons to attack things that they don't like anyway. Like the thought of working class people going on a beach holiday to Portugal. Fast food is another target of their wrath and I saw someone invited onto the news to complain about the carbon cost of how McDonald's ships meat from its industrial plantations in South America. This presumably implies that they're getting their avocados not from Waitrose but from an allotment in Surrey. Another one of their favourite topics about banning gas heating, all very well and good, but not all of us have the luxury of spending January at our second home in Tuscany. There really is a sense of do as I say, not as I do, that's only really ever bettered by when we're told to take, quote, personal responsibility by Boris Johnson, father of seven. But logic and reason play no part in this, and they never really have. Many in the environmental movement would look at the struggle of Rosa Parks and see it not as a civil rights issue, but about someone trying to use a bus that uses petrol, the sort of thing that should be banned anyway and replaced with a cycle lane. Perhaps the deafening silence over the human rights abuses in Afghanistan specifically and Asia generally are due to the solemn respect for people who are simply following Greta Thunberg's advice and actively dragging their country back to a pre-industrial way of life. Subsistence agriculture, no air travel, no consumer goods, and shanty towns made out of recycled materials like they have much of a choice. There are a disturbing number of people in the UK making lucrative careers out of suing the government over green issues, like whether or not schools should serve meat or not, or whether fixing the roads constitutes a hate crime against the planet. I'm personally waiting until they try to ban Santa Claus because he hands out coal to the naughty kids. It's all really a good example of how those who complain most about society are generally the people that contribute the least to it. I just wish that when it came to Extinction Rebellion they got on with the first part of that mission statement, the extinction bit. Anyway, see you next week. Please click subscribe.